Brett Pontecorvo here at MainStageToAbleton.com, and today I'm going to show you how you can save patches that you've created, even if you used some external audio effects or perhaps even some native Ableton devices to alter your sound. It's a question that I've been getting a lot lately, and it's actually really simple, but before I do that, I want to make sure that you are plugged in to the MainStage to Ableton community. So take a second, like this video, subscribe to this channel, sign up for my newsletter so that you do not miss anything because every single Tuesday and Saturday I'm going to be releasing new content, valuable tips, and just things that are really going to help you be on your A game for using Ableton. And I don't want you to miss out on any of that. So make sure that you like and subscribe before we jump in. So here we are inside Ableton Live and I've got this slow burn piano here. And let's just pretend for a second that I have done some editing to this slow burn piano. So perhaps um, I'm working with a singer and I need to pull some of uh, some of my high mids out. So I'm going to just pull a little bit out there. And then perhaps um, I wanted a little tiny bit of distortion. And then maybe I wanted a little bit more punch, or well, let's say um, just to protect our speakers, I wanted to throw a limiter on there and make sure that nothing crazy happens. So maybe you have something different than this. It doesn't actually matter what you've done, but what does matter is the process of saving all of these things together. Because right now, if I just click this save button, it's not gonna save any of these things. So the first thing that we need to do is select all of them. And you can do that just by clicking and then holding shift. And then if you use the shortcut command G, or you can right mouse click and hit group, it's going to put all of these inside an instrument rack. So here, this instrument rack, let's rename this to slow burn piano altered, because we've done something to it. And then all we need to do is come in here and click this little button. And it's going to automatically bring it up for me in my user library underneath presets, instrument rack, and here it is. Now I recommend that you create some folders, which you can do pretty easily by right mouse clicking and choosing a new folder. And you can name that whatever you want. I'm gonna delete that because I don't need it. Um, but I actually do have a folder for pianos. So now that I've saved this, I'm gonna move it into my piano folder so that if I want it, I know where to find it. So that's how easy it is to save your presets that you've created inside Ableton Live. All that really needs to be done is it all needs to be grouped inside an instrument rack. So remember to like and subscribe. I don't want you to miss any other helpful tips and helpful content that's going to be coming out every single Tuesday and Saturday. And you can do that by heading to my website at mainstagetoableton.com forward slash go. And I'm really looking forward to connecting with you there.